Namaste everyone. Welcome to the Charvak Podcast. This is your host Kushal Mehra. Today's book is different and I'll explain why. I usually don't cover novels uh, because A, I, don't, I, I think I don't have the skill set to read and understand this. But when I was sent this book by Penguin, I said yes to this book is because it was uh, for about a historical figure or about a period of history that I have a lot of opinion about. And it is written by someone who's done actually a lot of uh, research about it. Today's book is called The Man Who Avenged Bhagat Singh. I have with me the author Abhijit Balerao. Abhijit is, as, is an author, a translator, speaker, visual artist. He's been recognized for his research, will, uh, believe it or not. Uh, and this is why I am really looking forward, not just about this book, but about Shahid Bhagat Singh in general. His research is into Shahid Bhagat Singh's jail notebook. And that's the yes. interesting bit. And uh, he has translated it uh, into Marathi. Uh, also, Abhijit is an income tax inspector. <laughs> so, so, Abhijit, <laughs> would everybody be scared of you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not at all. So, uh, welcome, Abhijit. Thank you very much for coming to this podcast. So, uh, uh, how did you get this interest uh, into... I mean, income tax inspector is a very serious job. You have to do so much work. So, like, how did you get time for all of this? Uh, maybe tell tell me a little bit about your life journey so that I try to understand you better. So, basically, I am a history buff. Okay. Before I joined the government service, I was always a history buff. And uh, my family comes from a background of revolutionary uh, sort of. Because my great-great-grandfather was a armed revolutionary who fought against the Nizam in uh, Hyderabad Mukti Sangha. So the interest in revolutionary history, also uh, my family has been studying Maratha history for three generations now. I also teach Maratha history as a visiting faculty to Mumbai University. So uh, the area is more interesting to my family. Our dinner discussions are uh, more or less around this revolutionary period only. And uh, specifically Bhagat Singh, we are all fans of Bhagat Singh. There is no denying in that. Uh, he is everybody's hero, every Indian's hero. But uh, when I came across his jail notebook in 2013 around, from then onwards, I got specific interest into Bhagat Singh and his style, which I felt was much ignored or uh, lesser looked into. And that's how I got into this uh, subject of armed revolution, specifically focusing on the period of Bhagat Singh and around his times. So, so this jail notebook, now, uh, can you tell us a little bit how it got preserved? Because one of the biggest uh, tragedies of India is most of the things don't get preserved. Uh, they, they get lost. Yeah. Uh, so, so can, can we know a little bit how, how this jail notebook actually got preserved? It's a miracle because it is in 1925. So quite a bit yeah. of time before the British left. So how did we manage that feat? So basically, about Bhagat Singh, we know only two or three things. Like, uh, he killed Saunders, he threw a bomb in assembly, then he got himself arrested, and then he was hanged by the British. But uh, between the time when he was arrested in 1929 to he was hanged in 1931, there is around two and a half years of period. And in that period, he devoted himself to extensive study of all the fields that he could. He was a very avid reader. He was always uh, the famous Dwarkadas library from Lahore. The librarian always complained that he is asking for more books and more books. So basically, as you said, in in the prison, he wrote four books. Uh, History of Indian Revolution and many other things. But uh, the books got destroyed for multiple reasons. Only two things from his prison tenure got out. One is the famous article, Why Am I an Atheist? And the second one is his jail notebook. Surprisingly, this, this jail notebook didn't get historians' attention for another 80 years after Bhagat Singh died. Because it's very interesting because Bhagat Singh was keeping this notebook not his uh, regular diary. As in, he was not writing his daily uh, routine or experiences. He was writing, he was literally taking notes from famous authors, which he was reading. Like Marx, Frederick Engels, Mark Twain. Um, and many more. So, somehow, British ignored the this notebook. They thought it's harmless. But when we think about it, Bhagat Singh knew he was not getting out alive. Okay. And he knew he was going to die there in prison. 
तो देर इज नो लॉजिक बिकॉज वाई आर डाइंग मैन इज टेकिंग अवर नोट फ्रॉम द वेस्टर्न ऑथर फॉर गुड एवर सो वेन आई रेड द डायरी हिज नोटबुक हिज आई गॉट फिट फ्रॉम हिज ब्रदर्स ग्रैंड सन यादविंदर सिंह संधु दे हैव द ओरिजिनल कॉपी ही हैज पब्लिश इट or it has not been already published in english also but it has been published letter to letter i mean whatever the bhagat singh had written they had just transliterated in english when i got into this subject i took out each and every book read by bhagat singh and i tried to understand the context why he has written a single sentence from all of this book so surprisingly some sort of code was coming out bhagat singh was trying to portray uh, independent india how he envisioned independent india so in this notebook he writes about child labor he writes about women empowerment he writes about institution of marriage and all sort of things and that bhagat singh took me like surprised me that i didn't knew this bhagat singh bhagat singh i knew was holding a gun and shooting saunders and throwing the bomb in assembly but this was like 22 year old boy when he was hang he was 23 but while he was doing this research into legal study socialism marxism science religion atheism anarchism everything and this took me by surprise of what a man he was what level of thinking and what level of study he was doing so that i considered with context and that from that book the whole total personality of bhagat singh came in front of me so in the case of bhagat singh you know everybody tries to so, so if you go to the comrades uh, they'll say he was a marxist um i am a punjabi uh, although born and raised in mumbai my father is also born and raised in mumbai but we have our roots from punjab uh, originally and if you go to punjab there is quite a clear connection of arya samaj having a deep influence on bhagat singh yes. too yes 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 so so what what was bhagat singh if we were to understand uh, his personality like was he a marxist i mean from whatever i have read i don't see marxist leanings in bhagat singh so basically uh, i will tell you categorically and we need to answer this question very in detail so when bhagat singh was arrested he got himself arrested after throwing the bomb the congress people the senior leaders the opposition everybody labeled him by a certain adjective some called him terrorist some called him marxist communist anarchist and what not every every adjective that we have today when bhagat singh was asked this in the court but categorically that who are you and he said we are nothing but serious students of history and aspirations of this country this is the only thing he claimed in his life that whatever he was serious student of history and aspiring listening to the aspirations of our country while looking more into it people while he was alive no, and while he was being hanged nobody came forward and claimed him not even any party communist party anyone because communist ideology do not support individual acts of terrorism okay and his act of killing founders and throwing bomb was considered as individual acts of terrorism by communist party of india communist party of india was established in 1925 if bhagat singh wished to become a communist socialist marxist he could have joined the party or he could have become the founding member he had that influence in those times instead he goes on and re-establishes hra and names it as hindustan republican socialist association Mo- moving further last great historian who studied into the ideological perspective of bhagat singh was bipin chandra sadly he passed away before he could complete his book on bhagat singh he said if bhagat singh could have lived more there is very much possibility that he could have formed his own ideology either he because he was studying indian aspirations indian locality the indian conditions and somehow i personally feel after going to his notebook and looking his into his time for 10 and 10 and more years that he was convinced that none of these foreign philosophies could suit our indian terrain but by the by his death i can confidently say that he was a socialist democrat which Uh, arguably we adopted after independence we became a socialist democracy so more or less we were in the line in which bhagat singh was thinking so so interesting so i guess that's uh, that's expected and um, 
Now let's talk about Bhagat Singh's atheism. Obviously, his famous book. I've read it uh, about atheism and his. Uh, li- I think uh, it wasn't it one of the reasons that people started thinking he's a Marxist because of that book. Yes, people started thinking, but it's very much narrowed uh, aspects of atheism. Basically, Bhagat Singh uh, got into atheism. There is some credit must be given to the Arya Samaj background also because uh, his parents and his family were into Arya Samaj. And uh, basically, Arya Samaj took out all the uh, you know ridiculous, superstitious aspects out of Hinduism. So that and Sikhism also. So uh, Bhagat Singh, in his early stage, got a better clarity about Arya Samaj. When he got into the Western thinkers, and when he saw the riots and all kind of problems that our country was going through, this, through the religious things and uh, the, the Hindu-Muslim situation uh, during his times, he got into atheism very later. And uh, surprisingly, his the title "Why Am I Atheist?" is inspired from the book which he read uh, in the uh, in the prison. It was named as uh, "Why I Am Not a Christian." It was written by a very famous philosopher. I'm not getting his name, but uh, the book, the article is written on that line. Also. There is one thing that the atheism of Bhagat Singh is somehow linked to the patriotism of I'll explain. And he has written it also. Bhagat Singh says, in the early phase of revolutionary history, during the time of Yogantar and Anushila Samiti, they were staunch Hindus. Okay. And they were ready to die for the country. And in return, they expected to go to the heaven and get reward in afterlife. While as Bhagat Singh says, I am an atheist and I believe that when the noose fall around my neck, my existence ends and there is nothing after this. Even knowing this, that there is nothing after this, I am going to gallows and he feels that it is a higher level of sacrifice. And also I believe the public resonated with this idea. That's why he is called as Shahid Azam. So there are many angles to his atheism. It is controversial. Many factions from Punjab today are trying to portray that he was not atheist. And the uh, article why I'm an atheist is some sort of uh, projected or written by someone else. But uh, it's hard fact and it's proven that it was written by him and he was hardcore atheist. But at the same time, his atheism was not dominating over others. Chandrasekhar Azad was staunch Hindu. He used to wear Janeu and all that uh, uh, throughout his life. But other, we don't know any religious affiliations of Sukhdev or Rajguru and any other people. So basically these people were fighting for the freedom but while keeping their own ideology to their cell phone. So we should take that well, Bhag- okay. well Bhagat Singh's disbelief is the typical disbelief that most Hindus uh, follow. I mean like me I don't impose it on anyone. I don't talk about it. I don't find the need to and I still call myself a Hindu a very much inside the Hindu fold and uh, what happens is in today's discourse with uh, the advent of especially new atheism after 1990s with Dawkins, Hitchens and many others mm. uh, who came up uh, in the new atheistic movement, it kind of has created this monopolistic sort of a hold on what an atheist is supposed to be like. And when yes. people like myself or Bhagat Singh or many others who are just, I mean, millions and millions in India are like me. They just go about living their life. They don't feel the need to, you know, uh, take a tag and put it somewhere and say, see, I am uh, a disbeliever. They never felt. In fact, they even partake in rituals. I'm sure Bhagat Singh would also have, you know, if his mother would have told him, he would have done it also. He did. He would yes, not have yes. cared. He would yes. not have cared. He was like, kya ghar pe kalesh karu kind of a thing. But uh, yes, yes. it's very different. Now, now to getting to your book now, why did you decide to cover this anger? Like, uh, I don't know how many know. So obviously this novel is uh, a retelling, uh, albeit a fictionalized retelling of uh, Panindranath Ghosh, right? He was uh, once part. So how about this? Why don't you tell everybody, first of all, who Panindranath Ghosh is? Panindranath Ghosh is. So basically when HSRA was being formed, the Bhagat Singh's idea was to uh, establish a nationwide uh, single revolutionary party. Because before that, there were multiple small revolutionary parties which were functioning from uh, small regions or their regional level. So Bhagat Singh dreamt of establishing a single national party and for that he invited Panindranath Ghosh from Bihar. So this guy Panindranath 
was from Bihar, although a Bengali origin, but he was basically from Bihar, Bitiya, and he was a senior revolutionary, active from the time of Anushilan Samit. And surprisingly, he was placed under house arrest for one year uh, in 1919 for his uh, revolutionary affiliation. And uh, he was well-to-do, he was from well-to-do family, he had a stock in Mina Bazar in Betia, and uh, he knew how to repair defunct guns, and he, he had many contacts in Bengal. So, uh, Bhagat Singh and his friends thought that this guy is useful to us, and there is no other uh, revolutionary from Bihar, as uh, according to seniority, and we should take him into our fold. So, he joined the SSRA as head of Bihar. So, uh, there was central committee, the highest body in HSRA, and he was part of central committee, head of Bihar state. So, he was holding the highest position in the party. So, now, when Bhagat Singh surrendered after throwing bomb in assembly, within a month, all the rest of revolutionaries got arrested, except a few, like Chandrasekhar Azad and others. While few revolutionaries turned to the side of British, see, uh, when someone becomes a traitor, there is only two things. Chandrasekhar Azad had said this thing himself, that one becomes a traitor by uh, fear of the British torture, because the British used to torture like hell. They used to pick up your nails and uh, hairs and whatnot. So, there were few people who became approval by fearing the torture of British. But this guy, Parindal Nath Bose, became approver only because he was asking money and he asked in return the money and land and many things from the British. But see, the fact was, when he joined the HSRA, he wanted to head the party because he was the senior most. But somehow when the party went on, the younger boys, Bhagat Singh, Subdev, Rajguru, this took the lead and this hurt him somewhere, Panindranath Ghosh. So there were multiple reasons. But basically, the fact is, Panindranath Ghosh turned approver and he gave the most detailed statement against Bhagat Singh, Rajguru, Sukhdev and the party. And he, he was tied, he was the, given the title as the king's witness because the case was the king emperor versus Sukhdev, Bhagat Singh and other. So basically, when we see uh, about Bhagat Singh's case, we only think about the Saunders murder. But there was a bigger crime which, which he, Bhagat Singh was accused of. The crime was the conspiracy against the king emperor. They were committing Raj Ruh, what we call as Raj Ruh today. So, this concept of conspiracy against the king was has to be proven by the senior most party member. And uh, there was a special train bogey was booked for Parindranath Ghosh. A special magistrate was given to him. And Parindranath Ghosh took these people to every place in India where Bhagat Singh and Azad had worked and whatever they were conspiring against the king and conspiring against the Raj. So, his statement was decisive to hang Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev. So, this, to this extent, the traitorship went on. So, how long did Ghosh uh, work with Bhagat Singh? Basically, how long was he involved with these people? <coughs> so, by the time uh, the SSRA was established uh, in September 1928, uh, towards his arrest in April 29th, so around a year, I guess, uh, less than a year, Nidranath Ghosh worked with Bhagat Singh. So even before getting arrested, there was some signs uh, that Bhagat Singh and Adad was getting that this guy is not reliable. We should not rely on him. That's why in the later stage, when the bomb throwing was planned, or even Saunders murder was planned, Nidranath Ghosh wasn't uh, part of this plan. He wasn't asked because... Uh, he was given responsibility to find a bomb maker from Bengal because he was Bengali and he knew Bengali revolutionary. But he deliberately failed in multiple times whenever there was action. He deliberately stu stood out of action and kept himself safe. So there were some signs, but they they couldn't read it or they were very busy for their revolutionary activities. That's why they didn't think that this could turn out to be such a bigger uh, mole within the party. Now, the, is there any way to know in the, through the uh, uh, realms of history uh, that uh, they had any shuck of any kind of, they had a hunch that this guy could 
be a double agent or he yes. can turn up. To yes, him. yes. Uh, see, th- there is a this incident that I have taken from the statement of Anandamath Ghosh himself. So there is no uh, doubt about that. So basically, what happened is very interesting. Uh, when the party was formed, so after the discussion was over in Delhi, Rosha Kotla uh, Fort, Bhagat Singh said. See, we were we need money to run the party, and for that we need to commit more and more uh, decorities, like in the age of SRS. So in the United Province, which is now UP, we had committed Kakori and other things. So CID and police is very much aware about our activities. But in Bihar, in those times, there were very rich, rich landlords, Bengali uh, landlords, and they used to have like much amount of wealth. But in Bihar, no revolutionary activities had happened. Till day, so Bhagat Singh asked categorically to Pandit Nanak Ghosh that Dada, he used to call them Dada, Dada, you find out places where we can commit decority, and uh, I will be coming to Bihar in next 15 days. So Pandit Nanak Ghosh was bothered. He thought that ये तो मरे मरे गले पे पड़ गया अभी. Party का member बना नहीं तो इन्होंने मुझे अभी पकड़ लिया कि decority करना है. He had been inactive for Around 20 years ago, so he counteracted Bhagat Singh by saying that you cannot come like this in Bihar. You are a Sikh. Bhagat Singh used to wear a pulp proper at that time. Uh, Paninda Bose said you have to come in Bihar like a Bihari. You will have to cut your hair. Now you understand what this means for a Punjabi, for a Sikh. And Bhagat Singh immediately said, "Okay, I will cut my hair and I will come to Bihar." And Paninda Bose went into shock that how the hell this guy agreed in one sentence. So. In that sense, also the atheism part was uh, growing in Bhagat Singh, and literally in next 15 days, Bhagat Singh and Chandrasekhar Azad went to Bihar, went to Betia, and met this guy, Pandit Nath Ghosh, and asked him, "Have you identified the places?" And by that time, Pandit Nath Ghosh hadn't done a single thing. Chandrasekhar Azad was furious that he said, "You are wasting my time. This is not how a revolutionary party works, and I am here for the next two days." If you are able to find the any suitable uh, person, then I'll be okay. Otherwise, I'll leave it. And surprisingly, in the next morning, putting some urgent work, Panil Nath goes leaves Bitiya and goes to Kolkata, leaving Azad and Bhagat Singh uh, by themselves. So Azad was so furious, and this was the first time that Bhagat Singh and Azad knew that this guy isn't reliable. So they didn't count him in any other action. But they had given him the party head, so I guess there was no option. And the time period is very less now: September 1928 to April uh, 1929. So only I think is three uh, seven months only. So it's very interesting. In the book, you have actually tried to find quotes of of yes. Bhagat Singh and others in in. I mean, in fact, they've been mentioned in the movies also because I've seen Bhagat Singh ki movie. That's why I know this. That there's no other yes, yes, yes. Uh, reason. I think it was in the Ajay Devgan movie or something, right? Yeah. Where uh, one I, of the I, lines I, was used. Yeah. Acha, I have a question. I always had this. When when he was getting hanged, that scene of that Sardar Ji telling, "Oh, putter, hune the Rabda na lele," as in, "Abhi to Rab Bhagwan ka naam lele," and Bhagat Singh says, "No, I don't need to." Is that real or that is just a fictionalized uh, retelling? By that is that is real, but it had happened. Few days before the hanging, there was some Sikh who was working in the prison, and uh, it is said that this article, why am I not saying, is product of that Sikh provoking him to uh, take the God's name. So Bhagat Singh had uh, replied to it, "Nahi menu maut da khop hai, nahi menu rabda yaki." So this was quoted by Bhagat Singh, and he went on to explain his uh, uh, side of his his. His individual atheism into this elaborate article. It had happened. Fair enough. So because I I was not sure. Uh, now this is, this is very interesting. So so it's only there is only a very little transact uh, interaction right between Bhagat Singh and Ghosh after Ghosh turns a prover and he finds out. There's yes. not a much yes. of interaction, or there are much more moments. Like because I, uh, you you've used that one line, you've not betrayed me, you've betrayed her, her being motherland, yes. right? That's what he yes, says, yes. right? Yes, yes. So I, I basically, even though my book is titled as fiction, I have kept everything as per history, ninety nine percent. 
I will just mm. use a little connection from Baikun Shukul to Bhagat Singh to make it more interesting and interesting. But Panindranath Ghosh's interaction with Bhagat Singh was very much limited after he was arrested because he was the ace card of British. He was the king's witness because he was so important to them. Without him, the case couldn't stand. So that's why he was very much protected. And after the identification for it, straight away, he was asked to give statements in the court. And interestingly, when Bhagat Singh and his associates were beaten in the court in front of magistrate and people, when Bhagat Singh and his associates um, boycotted the court proceeding, most of the Pandit Ghosh statements were recorded in the absence of this uh, accused, Bhagat Singh and other revolutionaries. So the revolution, the interaction was very less. And the uh, uh, you have read the interesting incident when he was uh, being assassinated uh, in Maharashtra, Jalgao. After that, he was too much protected. So there were many attempts to assassinate him also. So British but tried hard to protect him. So now let's get into the whole... Uh, okay, Bhagat Singh is uh, hung with uh, two others, Rajdev, Suk uh, Sukhdev and Rajguru. So now, like, did Ghosh know his time was up when they were hung? Like, did he know these people are not going to leave me? Did Ghosh had an idea of what he had done? Or did he uh, basically no, not care? I mean, ha, is there any research on that? Like, what was Ghosh's reaction? So, basically, Ghosh was the senior most member. He had seen the demise of Anushilan. He had seen the fall of Yugantar, Gadar, HRA, Kakuri, and now HSR. Now, see, from the perspective of this guy, he had seen all the approvers from HRA were alive and firing. Okay, so th there is a sentence which I have used in the book where Ghosh says to Manmohan Banerjee, his chela, saying that, uh, have you seen any senior revolutionary? And he says, no, why? Because they all die young. Because he knew that none of them were going to live to, uh, you know, kill him or some sort of hurt him. And he trusted the British to protect him. He knew that the... British sun was never going to set on Indian soil. And he deliberately chose the side of British. There is also one reason, which is quite human for his side. Uh, there was a rule in HSRA not to get married without the permission of party head, that is Aga. But mm -hmm. before Bhagat Singh threw bomb into assembly, Ghosh got himself married in around March 29 or something. So Interesting. That, so that is also a reason where he turned an approval because he had a family to look after. But at the same time, there was a person named uh, Brahmadar who was a party member and married. And he turned approver because of the same reason. But when he turned approver, his wife sent a message to him through his mother by saying, if you couldn't stand with Bhagat Singh and your friend in this time, consider we are dead for you. And when Brahmadar Mishra got this message, changed the side. He, he took back his statement and he stood by the side of Bhagat Singh. But uh, Pandirnath Ghosh knew about this, but he didn't change side. Moreover, he went on and gave statement in four more cases in Bihar. So basically, this man was responsible for three more uh, hangings and around 20 more people going to Andaman and Nicobar for life imprisonment. So basically, I'd say that this traitor destroyed the armed revolution single-handed. That's how wretched this man was. Now, this guy, so basically he did it for the money, right? That's what we would say? Yes. Pretty yes. much. But saving his life was basically, see, in the history, on 14th June, this man was arrested in Calcutta. Okay. And on 20th June, the person takes the letter of pardon. Now, from 14th June, in those times, calculate the time for traveling to Lahore, from Kolkata to Lahore. It, it must have been at least two or three days. Okay. Oh, yes. This man go, goes to Lahore. Let's say he reaches Lahore on 17th. Okay. Now, there are only three days. Now, generally, if a person is tortured and it, it's a revolutionary, I suggest, I think he should bear the torture for at least a week. So, there is no possibility that this person was tortured. Within three days, he was just ready. Okay. 
उसको जो पूछना है मैं बता दूंगा दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग एंड इन केस ऑफ अदर अप्रूवर्स मेजरली जय गोपाल एंड हंसराज वोरा हंसराज वोरा स्पेसिफिकली आस्क फॉर हायर एजुकेशन इन इंग्लैंड एंड ही वॉज गिवन सीट एट लंडन स्कूल ऑफ इकोनॉमिक वाइल जय गोपाल आस्क फॉर लिटल अमाउंट ऑफ मनी बट दिस का This guy categorically got a 50 acre land in Bithia. There is, I don't guess that British could have given them voluntarily. There must have been some agreement before. That's why I guess this. So now let's talk about the plot to assassinate um, the 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 person involved over here. Now, how and when? did it all start who decided okay we need to bump this guy off he betrayed us he's a traitor to the cause he's a traitor to mahabharati to the nation we're going to bump him off it's it's a very uh, very very bold decision to take uh, so so how do how does this go about so the decision was first taken by chandrasekhar azad the commander in chief but he was not accessible because he was so much protected he was kept in lahore court Uh, which was the office of governor of punjab okay so basically when he was it was decided to first scare him so azad sent the parcel bombs to the approach of kakori and one of them got seriously burned and one of them was saved by the constable so it the it was some sort of first message for nirnath bhot if you still choose to be traitor you will be delivered justice but he went on later um, when he was called uh, to identify uh, bhagwan das mahol and sadashiv malkapurkar in jalgaon chandrasekhar azad and bhagwati charan bhora deliberately smuggled a pistol inside the mushawal jail and the uh, it was they tried to assassinate him in the premises of court itself jalgaon court itself but it it failed later when he was in allahabad chandrasekhar azad rented a room against where in against the safe house where his this letter was kept but that attempt also failed unfortunately azad died in encounter in february 1931 bhagat singh died in march 1931 okay now this letter returned to his hometown betia he was awarded and he was flourishing he was the man if you need anything from the government now comes in picture the hero of of the of my book vaikun shukun who is a pre primary teacher from bihar he is kind of bhagat singh he worships bhagat singh like anything and he has been closely following the case he has joined he is part of hsra but he has joined the party after the arrest of bhagat singh so there is very less possibility there is no possibility that he had met the bhagat singh and other himself okay so there is another person named yogendra shukul he is senior revolutionary he is from the same village of baikul and he has inducted baikul into the party now yogendra also gets arrested when the case is over baikul is out and yogendra is inside the prison yogendra calls baikul and says this is your life's mission that you have to execute the traitor and by the time uh, the remaining revolutionaries of punjab had sent a pamphlet in newspaper to bihar putting ki daag ko dhoge ki dhoge will you carry the traitor plot or will you dare to watch it so baikunt was already training uh, yogendra was had arranged his cookery training and all sort of training in muzaffarpur now baikunt was ready so uh, the assignment was given to baikunt to assassinate this traitor so this is uh, for those who don't know this is baikunt shukla right he was yes. uh, an indian nationalist revolutionary nephew of yogendra shukla who no, he was, was nephew of yogendra shukla he was uh, like somehow related but they were from the same village they were not blood related so he was uh, but uh, yogendra was a part of this thing na hindustan socialist hsra uh, yes. right so now the contemporary of azad yes he was the contemporary of azad so also uh, so, so 
is that like Baikunt volunteered to be like, okay, I'm up for the job. I'm going to bump him off. How was it like? Yes, he up for the job, but the party uh, functioned democratically. So when he got the message, he insisted that I will do it. I have been training for this for so long and this is my life mission. This person had betrayed and caused the death of my hero. So it's my responsibility, but it had to be decided democratically. So he took the message to the party member. There was a leader, Kishori Prasanna Sina. He was senior Congress leader and a revolutionary also. So six persons sat into a meeting and the message of Yogendra was discussed. The message was very much interesting and it's a part of uh, you know, folk tales in Bihar nowadays. Uh, Yogendra said, if you have a gun, shoot him to death. If you have a knife, stab him to death. If you don't have a gun and knife, strangle him to death. If you couldn't strangle him, bite and rip off his neck, but kill him. So this was the message and a lucky draw was drawn and miraculously and fortunately the name of Baikun Shuki came out from this lucky draw that he will be given the responsibility and he took Chandrama Singh which was his friend and he had trained with him uh, in Muzaffarpur. So uh, he took Chandrama Singh and they both decided to go on for the mission. Now, like in your book, you talk about a situation where uh, there is an inspector who tells Panindranath uh, that, listen, you got to be careful. Uh, I, I find it very interesting. And uh, you present it as if Panindranath is uh, like, I have full faith in the British Empire, sir. I believe the crown will save me. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is... <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it has happened. That is a fact when you kind of return. Yogendra Shukl, before he sent Baikunt on this mission, sent a specific letter. The letter which I have quoted in the book is as it is, word by word. So, hmm. Yogendra had sent his letter that you must ask forgiveness to the nation. Otherwise, there is no other punishment for you other than death. Okay. So, Palindranath literally had no option. There is some interesting development before that also, which I had not written in the book. Uh, there was a traitor in the case of Chandrasekhar Azad, his name of Veer Bhadra Tiwari. So it is said mm. that Veer Bhadra Tiwari had betrayed Azad by telling the uh, British about his location for the encounter and so. After Azad died, there was two assassination attempts on Veer Bhadra Tiwari, but he survived. Uh, one attempt was the gun malfunction and in another attempt the constable apprehended the assassinator. So he had and of course Panindranath Ghost was very much important than uh, Virbhadra Tiwari. Uh, the guard which used to stand by Panindranath Ghost 24-7 had an automatic rifle. So he was too sure that he was not going to die and he knew basically that no major player is out. That confidence was also there na? because he knew every revolutionary it throughout India. All the players were inside the prison or dead, including Yogendra Shukla. So there was no new player who could hurt him. Moreover, he was a good shooter. He used to carry his Mauser everywhere he used to go. And he had an armed constable around him. So there was no reason for him to get afraid. But to laga 100%. So then wo kaise mara? let's talk about that. Let's let's uh, keep that now as our uh, final segment. And then I want to ask a few other things. But so how did he die? Can you tell everybody? So basically, Vaikun had multiple choices to kill him. Okay. He acquired a gun from a fellow revolutionary who acquitted in the uh, from the case of Yogendra Shukla. But I'm even I'm surprised during those times, the gun control was so tough. As soon as Baikun got the gun, the police raided his home and the gun was uh, confiscated. So Baikun had no other option to go uh, with traditional weapon like Kukri. Okay. But there is also another aspect to it. He could have acquired another gun. So the, the party members suggested two options. Either shoot him from a distance or bomb his house. Okay. Now Baikun was very meticulous about this thing, which said this person, Parindra, had betrayed Bhagat Singh in front of nation, in front of public. 
so the justice should be delivered in public only and shooting or bombing his home while hurting his family members it is not a place for delivering the justice so fanindran uh, baikun took kukris with him he and chandrama they went on cycle bicycle they rode for like uh, nine eight days to reach betia and uh, on the evening of 9th november 1932 when fanindran ghosh was sitting outside his uh, shop and he chose the time specifically uh, it was the occasion of chhat puja the chhat puja was over and the meena bazaar was lighted by electrical lighting so in those time it was the thing to see the people the relatives children women and men were all around this place and it was sort of mela something and baikun chose that place to execute uh, fanindranath ghosh there is also one surprising thing the king edward memorial hospital was next to the uh, meena bazaar so no matter how you harm the traitor within 2 minutes this person was to be taken to the hospital so there was no second chance if you were going to hit him hit him likewise that he was not going to survive so there was so baikun took the chance and he killed him using kukri so now everybody talks about bhagat singh why do you think the man who actually avenged bhagat singh is not talked about a lot why why do you think that uh, unfortunately people have forgot him because when i when i came across this character when i came across this name baikun sukul i knew that he had avenged uh, uh, bhagat singh by killing panindranath ghosh but i didn't knew the grander plan the earlier assassination attempts how wretched this person was how he was the person responsible to establish the conspiracy against the whole case and when i read into his statement i understood he was um, on the other side from the beginning only so um, we are collectively responsible for forgetting this leader basically even when i started his the research on baikun sukla except his trial uh, which was compiled by nandi kishor sukla in 1999 there is no many documents available on him and even not not even baikun sukla i am talking about the armed revolutionaries from bihar there were mm. literally there is nothing on the internet in the archives or anywhere but while uh, researching for this novel i found so much revolutionary activities that were committed in bihar by bihar revolutionaries that should come to the light so is baikun shukla a, a, a known figure in bihar from whatever you've tried to understand do biharis no. remember him the area around mudafarpur remember him but there are so many fictions and dantakathas around his name very few people know exactly what happened exactly how it happened and why uh, how he was uh, responsible for avenging basically this person was bhagat singh udham singh see udham singh avenged jallianwala and he went on to avenge his hero bhagat singh so it is need that we should celebrate him at least on the level of sadar udham singh but unfortunately we forgot him so 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 how 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 did his trial go did he plead guilty did he say i am not guilty how did all of that go because he was hung so right the, yeah so basically the trial was summed up in two months okay there were four juries appointed by the government out of four three juries said uh, baikun sukla is uh, not responsible for killing hanuman while only one jury said that he was responsible however the judge was just named t lubi the judge took the decision going against the jury saying that no baikun sukla is responsible for killing hanuman good there was very less evidence and he was arrested after 6 months uh, the assassination of hanuman good so there was very less evidence he was given chance to plead higher but baikun only said this word i am ready and he was uh, hanged in the next two months in may 1934 so uh, in the next two months surprisingly his weight increased there is a record by his fellow revolutionary a, a congressman who was with him during his last times 
विभूति भूषण चट्टोपाध्याय जीवनी ही सेट ही वॉज ग्लोइंग लाइक एनीथिंग ग्लोइंग लाइक एनीथिंग हिज वेट वॉज इंक्रीजिंग ही वॉज सो हैपी बिकॉज ही गॉट टू डाय लाइक टू जीरो there is very interesting analogy in the revolutionary history of india is very much overlooked upon chandrashekhar azad idolized bagajatin bagajatin died in encounter chandrashekhar azad died in encounter hmm. bhagat singh idolized kartar singh saraba who was hanged at the age of 19 so bhagat singh got to die like his hero at the age of 23 and surprisingly hmm. our hero baikun shukla idolized bhagat singh and he got to die like his hero so there is very interesting simile why these great people choose death so i wanted to spend before i wrap up our chat with exactly this the mindset of a revolutionary it's a very different mindset and uh, people often confuse a terrorist with a revolutionary so in your research because you specialize in this area you specialize in understanding revolutionaries and this particular subject how are revolutionaries different from terrorists it's a very important question very very important question and i must uh, give you an anecdote about this so a very senior journalist kuldeep nayar uh, wrote a book on bhagat singh uh, it was titled without fear and when he wrote that book the question that got him to write that book what this question only what is the difference between terrorist and revolutionary and this question was asked to him by the people who had killed indira gandhi okay so the people who had killed indira gandhi uh, sought to think about themselves as revolution while actual revolutionism and terrorism are poles apart a revolutionary is a very sensitive person while as terrorist there is no place about sensitivity you will have to do your job mercilessly i'll give an example when bhagat singh chose to shoot this guy sonder john sonder immediately after shooting him a a message was printed throughout the lahore which said we regret the killing of human being but so and so so he was killed because the our national leader was executed and this was speech for tap and in his statement bhagat singh somehow tells that saunders was such a handsome guy we regret killing of human being see in next step when bhagat singh chose to bomb assembly the bomb was specifically designed not to harm anybody so it was specifically meant for sending a message only to make the death here it needs a loud explosion it the it was the clear message written on to onto it and even the police confirmed that no one was harmed uh, during the bomb and the bomb was designed specifically so basically the revolutionary believes in mass movement not in uh, the act of terrorizing people these people choose the path of violence with conviction to get the freedom because the british was using violence and there was two ways counter it. either you use the violence uh, or you go to gandhi and way so these people the revolutionaries chose the way of violence only but this this has nothing to do with the terrorism another big difference between terror activities or terrorists terrorists of all kinds and revolutionaries is that revolutionaries don't aspire to govern a nation after that they don't yes. want some sort of power they just want yes. power for the people terrorists want to take over and control the things themselves there's a huge difference I'll, between the former and the latter i'll tell you an interesting anecdote uh, the great revolutionary garibaldi from italian revolution when the mm -hmm. italian revolution was over and the king asked him what do you want any kind of reward money he could have asked for anything he just asked for a bag of grain seeds and he went on to his hometown uh, to uh, do farming and when chandrashekhar azad was asked pandit ji aap kya karoge azadi milne ke baad so pandit ji said uh, arhar ke dalwa and i mean in, i can say in hindi ki dal aur bhat jam ke khaunga aur so jaunga that's what they dreamt the revolutionary never 
decided they never aim to govern the country after getting independence they just dreamt of getting independence only and bhagat singh said the revolution is sharpened on the ideas of western western of ideas so the there is a basis of ideology a revolutionary is an idol of in action while a terrorist he is somewhat, somewhat brainwashed by some insane radical ideology he has not kept he doesn't have any capability to critically think while a revolutionary is capable of thinking and asking questions to anything that has been presented to him yeah i i i i it's just a fascinating mindset these people have like you know you yes. you quote uh, and this has been quoted too in the movie i remember um, about jatin das right tell me where do i have to die along with yes. you guys i mean yes. this mind is this mindset is very different very, very different. different mindset very rare. very different it's it's just uh, uh, the i don't know how the nation will repay these people is all i can say the nation it's impossible can never repay these people never we can never but repay at least these we people. could do that is remember that absolutely and 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 which is why i applaud you for writing this book it is a beautiful retelling of uh, of these great men who fought for our nation for our motherland and they wanted nothing in return so uh before we wrap it up uh, uh, abhijit is there anything else would you like to add uh, before we wrap today's discussion thank thank you pushar thank you very much and it has been wonderful talking to you it has been great right. opportunity thank thank you very much so guys once again in the description of the podcast you will see the link to buy abhijit's book click the link yes. go buy it it doesn't matter if you're watching this on youtube or you're listening to it on spotify go buy the book it's a fascinating read honestly these are the kinds of people we don't even hear in in the annals of history yes. uh and uh, it's very important that we know about all these heroes from our past so please go buy the book if you can and if you want to support the charvak podcast please like this video subscribe to the channel leave a comment in the comment section if you want to become a member do join the membership program if you are an audio listener leave a rating wherever you are and i'll see you guys next time until then namaste take care bye bye thank you bye